Good, good afternoon. I guess it's almost afternoon. I'm going to say that. It's almost 12. Um, let's say a quick prayer. Thank you for this day and getting us all here safely. Please bless this food to the nourishment of our bodies and our bodies to thy service. Thank you for Gabby and her speaking to us today. Help us to hear your message in her words. All these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I just wanted to thank Gabby for being here today. Well, actually, I want to thank all of you for coming out. Wow, what a turnout. Thank you so much. I was afraid because of the rain. I thought I couldn't have five people there. And Daddy is a huge draw, as, as we can say. <laughs> <laughs> Not too much pressure, I guess. But um, this is our first, this is the first part of our two-part women's inspirational series. And um, the next one will be May the 9th with Virginia Conver. So no pressure. <laughs> 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 Go back a little ways. Um, many of you know her, but you may not know her story. So, without further ado, I, I want to welcome you guys. Um, um, and I want to keep this conversation like super casual. Like, I just want to pretend like we're all sitting on a couch drinking coffee or wine or anything else and just talking. And so, Please, you know, stop me if you're like, okay, I'm gonna ask you something. You know, please feel comfortable doing so. Um, if you're like me, I'll just forget. By the end, I'll just be like, dang it. Um, I want to ask and I forgot. So, stop me anytime. I come from a big, loud family where there's always multiple conversations. Jump in. I encourage it. It's not interrupting, okay? Um, you know, I thought, I prepared a speech, okay, so I'm going to try to touch on this, but you know, I think all of us here know that God has his own plans, and if it goes another direction, it goes another direction, and I think we'll all be okay with that. Um, so we'll just see where today leads, really, is how I want to, you know, look at it. Um, so I thought about faith for a little bit, and I, um, you know, sometimes... You know, I didn't always have a strong faith, and, and my faith is always continuing to grow. So, you know, if somebody said the word faith to me probably like 30 or 40 years ago, I would be like, oh, it's a destination. It's, you know, you get there, and you have no doubts, and you have, you know, you absolutely certain, wholeheartedly, you know, just 100% certainty. And, you know, thank you Randy Jones, who just posted this on Facebook. So I'm going to walk around and kind of share with you, this is what I thought it would look like. Oh my gosh. And this is really how it goes. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it really is. Um, you know, we are all good at hopefully setting goals for ourselves, whether it comes to faith or anything else. And, you know, and, and we set up expectations for ourselves, and sometimes we are our worst critics, you know? And thank goodness for God's grace and mercy, um, because I don't know that I'll ever get here until I'm in heaven, obviously, you know, because we just, um, my journey is constantly, it's not static, <laughs> you know, it's constantly changing, and that's okay, and I, and, I, and I think over the years, that's one thing I've grappled with is, that is okay, you know, um, and everyone's going to be at a different place. Um, I want to talk to you a little about how I started. Um, you know, this path, it can be doubt and uncertainty and moments of, like, <clears throat> trembling fear, but profound joy. You know, it's, it's, um, it's an amazing journey. So when I was a child, I was raised Catholic, and my parents did a great job. I was at church every Sunday, I had catechism every Monday, and um, I did, I, I you know, I had to memorize a lot of prayers and Bible verses, 
and and I asked a lot of questions, and it was a beautiful thing. Reflection is an, is to me a very important tool that we all have in our toolbox, and I encourage everybody to do that because I think it really helps you grow in your faith when you can reflect and see where God has been along your journey. Um, you know, my, my parents would share Bible stories with me, or, you know, I'd learn in catechism, but it kind of was what it was. It was a story, you know? It wasn't, you know, you're young, innocent, none of it really applies to your life, or that's, you know, that's, oh, that's joyful, yeah, Jesus is good, yeah. You know, um, and then, and then you grow from it, but I, I just, you know, it was dreamy, as a child to like look up at the sky and stars and I really thought I was looking into heaven or you know you'd see a rainbow and you're like oh God did that he did that you know and so and then you go through life's moments and then that's where the doubt creeps in and you know the journey of you know you, you you're up on a high and then you come down on a low so honestly um I probably lost my way, not so much lost my way with religion, you know. In college, I did the soup kitchen, and you know, Pat, yay, Gabby, you know. Um, but I didn't go to church every Sunday. I didn't really, I think the difference where I was back then and where I am now is the word relationship. You know, you can know the Bible, you can, you can see things, you can, you know, practice, go to church, go to catechism, blah, you know. But where is that relationship, you know? And that's what I was missing. And so in my 20s, you know, I made some bad decisions. I'm not going to lie. And I'm an open book, and I will tell you, you can judge me or not judge me. You know, like, you can ask me anything. Um, I made some bad decisions. And, you know, in the Catholic faith, I don't want to criticize it because there's so many beautiful things about Catholicism. Um, but they really look at sin in a different way than some other denominations do. And I felt like, you know, I was bound for help, to be honest. And so I really pulled away from the church. I pulled away like I just, I'm not really deserving. You know, I, I really don't. And, and the irony is, no, you're not. <laughs> and none of us are really deserving. But it took so many people, church, and things to convince me I was deserving. So I, I truly believe, again, I'm going to harp on reflection this whole presentation because until I reflected and saw, you know what, God put that person in my life. God put that church in my life. God put where I lived in my life at the time. Um, for so many valuable reasons because, you know, even though um, I was finally convinced, you know, then I was on fire. You know, like I was on fire. I was where we're up here practicing, learning, getting in, you know, like just, um, and I'm thankful for that, you know, because, you know, I think the more I learned, you know, can, you know, how did someone convince me that I was deserving? You know, I think knowledge is power. I think, you know, sharing people's imperfect testimonies, you know, I'm perfectly imperfect. Or um, reading, really delving into the Bible, like, oh my gosh, Jesus didn't reach out to the high and mighty. Jesus didn't, you know, and I thought, okay, so they deserved it, maybe I can't, you know, and I think... Those things really convinced me. So it was just so many people here, too. I mean, I can get teary-eyed because you have been so pivotal in my journey, whether it's a class that you led or um, your testimonies and, and your wisdom um, have shaped me and my faith and who I am. And I'm so beyond grateful for that. Um, you know, but I think it's a wonderful thing to reflect because, you know, and it's a comical thing actually too because, you know, when you go through life's really deep valleys, you look back on, you know, in the 20s, it was like, oh, that friend betrayed me. <laughs> Who cares? Who cares, you know? Like, I mean, like, is that really going to send you in the ditches, you know? Um, 
And then, you know, but I was still had the tools in my toolbox to deal with those things, whether it was a friend betrayal, whether it was, you know, as you get older, you know, sibling rivalry or silly, trivial things that, you know, I don't want to say they're trivial because to some people it could be, you know, heartbreaking and to some people it could make them, you know, really question faith. Um, so, but to me, um, you know, it was so wonderful that I learned about God's mercy and, and grace, that I could get through those things and trust that God's plan for me is good, you know? And so, um, you know, I was trotting along this journey and trotting along this path, you know, I've been laid off so many times. The first time was more of an ego fried thing. You know, I was like, oh, um, <laughs> but, and then the second time you're like, okay, I got this, I got this, you know, and back to reflection, I can look back and see, you know what, God is just going to lead me to something greater. And um, even to my, you know, of course, I'm a parent now, but my parents were like stressed out to the nine, like, oh my gosh, what do I do with the kids and the house and all? And I was like, you know what? It's okay. God has a plan for me. You know, God has a plan, and I'm okay with that. And even though it's going to get, it's, it's not easy, it's going to get stressful. I'm going to have to cut back, or I'm going to have to pull for my retirement, or whatever it is. Um, it's okay, because I know I'm going to be led to greater things. And I can look back and reflect, and my career has totally led me to that. I mean, my boss lets me talk about religion at work. I mean, who does that? You know, like, and he shares in that. Like, I was like, thank you, God. What a blessing that I was laid off and I was unemployed. You know, who, who says thank you for that? It's not, you know, I, I, it's not fun going through it. But it, it led me to, again, my spiritual growth. And so um, I'm grateful, almost, for those, those trials and tribulations. Because honestly, um, I was a confident little teenager. You know, maybe I would have just been like, I don't, I don't need anything. You know, like, I, I'm glad I was not down. You know, I'm, I'm truly... You know, it, it, I wouldn't be where I am today spiritually without being knocked down a couple times, you know. And so I am thankful for that. Um, and I do think, you know, um, you know, I don't know if, all, if everyone here knows my story, but a few years ago, I'm trying not to lose it. Um, you know, I'm curious. Yeah, the greatest trial of my life was losing Brian. Okay, I was um, I was older when I got married, and living in a small town, I'll tell you guys, you know, everyone's like, "What's wrong with you?" You, know? <laughs> <laughs> um, you need to lower your standards, and I'm like, "No, I am not going to lower my standards." No. And again, God has a plan for me. And normally that would shut people up. You know, like you could be like, God has a plan. I'm good. He's going to put someone in my life. And and I, I do want to tell you this story because a friend of mine, you know, I was real quiz inquisitive to my friends that got married early. I'm like, how'd you know? How'd you know he was the one? Because quite frankly, I was almost engaged before. And I went on one date with that guy and thought, I'm going to marry him. And we didn't get married, and it's a good darn thing we didn't. Um, but then a friend of mine said this, and it was an aha moment for me. She's like, you know that feeling when you're in church? And it is almost a physical sensation. I'm sorry to weird anybody out if this weirds you out by saying this, but when you feel the Holy Spirit come into you, they said, if you get that feeling around someone, you know. And I got that with Brian. So, I knew that God handpicked him for me. You know, so that was a really hard thing when he got taken from me. You know, and so then I, you know, I was like, oh my gosh, I have all this faith, but I'm really struggling. I don't want to be this bitter woman. I don't want to be, but I, I you know, I got to know why. Why did you do this? And, um... You don't, I don't need to know why. I don't know if I ever will know why. And that's okay. Because, you know, 
maybe that's what Brian needed, or there was something going on. I don't know. And that, like I said, that is okay. But I'm going to tell you, I begged. I was like, God, you know, I should have the faith of a child. I know that. It's in the Bible. You tell me that. I can read about it. But I don't. You know, I don't. And I was like, you've got to show me where your hands are in this. Please, you know, show me. I don't want to lose faith. I, I want to be a light. You know, I want to be a bright light to everyone around me. That is my purpose and goal in life. I want, I don't want people to say, oh, you're pretty. Oh, you're this. I want people to say, you are a bright light. That is what I want. And I was not a bright light. And so I begged him. And back to reflection, right? So I reflected and I thought, okay, I got laid off. And then I got moved to this manager and I got my territory changed. Why? Because God knew this was going to happen. And now I'm closer to my kids. I can be there for my kids. I don't have to go to Memphis. I don't have to go to Nashville. I don't have to, you know, like, I was like, okay, show me something else. <laughs> show me something else. Um, you know, and um, little by little, you know, uh, a glimmering light, you know, was following me in my path. And, you know, the more I delved into, uh, thank you, the more I delved into scripture and the more I delved into other people's testimonies, um, it, you know, life devotions, because I was like, God, you know I want to curl up in a ball and just lay in bed. I don't want to do, I, you know, that's what I want to do. And um, he's like, nope, you're a mom, and you're, you're going you're gonna to continue to be a good mom, and you're going to continue to be a good sister, you know, and, and knowing that's what I want. You know, I want to be those things. And so, um, you know, again, I think if you ask God to show you the way, even though we shouldn't have to do that, we all admit we shouldn't have to do that, but I'm like, I'm sorry. You know, he, he has mercy. He has grace. He will show you. And that's my biggest thing. That I, if, I, if I can show anyone, like, you are not alone. You will never be alone. Because, you know, even when I was younger, and through this whole journey, I had the most amazing support in so many of you. I had my family that was so amazing. But it really was my relationship with Christ that pulled me out, to be honest. Um, and he had to say, you know, he had to be like, I'm going to show you where I'm holding your hand. And I'm going to continue to hold my hand. And even when you thought I wasn't there holding your hand, I was. You know, and so I think asking uh, is my big thing. You know, I, I constantly ask, you know, please show me where you want me to be today or how I can be a light to others. Um, you know, I have a soft spot in my heart now for widows, you know, and I just want to, you know, I will do everything in my power because you can go down a bad road, you know, when things like, you know, it doesn't have to be losing a spouse. It could be so many other tragic things that can send you in a sp downward spiral, and, and that's okay, you know, because when you cry and you get it out and you lose it, that's where you gain it, you know, and I think... Uh, my journey has really led me there. Um, but I think it's not about what I want to just really stress. It's not about having the answers. And that's so hard for us that are um, so organized. Well, I don't know about <laughs> I don't know about organized, but, you know, as, okay, let's see, okay, as a parent or as a teacher or something. You want to control, like, your child's destiny or the good things. You want them to lead down the right path or you want to, you know, and, and, it, and it's not controllable. You know, those things are not controllable and, um, and that's okay. You know, and a part of me, it's a hard journey because I may be on a good day of happiness or my daughter's on a day of sadness. My other daughter's on a day of angriness anger and you know waging that where is everybody and how can we meet each other and be there for each other in those different states of emotion um, and it's where a lot of people struggle 
you know, it's where a lot of people, you know, but acknowledging like, okay, I'm not going to let that person ruin my happy moment, you know, whether I pull a funny memory or I just was talking to Sandra about like finding a medical record of Ryan's, you know, that just, just, I just busted out laughing. Like you had read it and thought he was a teenager, but he was like almost 40 or something, acting like a kid, you know, um, and I keep a hat box. Um, because I'm not a scrapbooker, um, <laughs> but, uh, and I keep, we used to write letters to each other and whatever, you know, and you grab that happy moment, you know, I, like, on a day, like, I need, I, I need it today, you know, whether it's just, whether it's just a funny note, a silly note, a movie ticket, um, I'll have to tell you a funny story, and death is funny because, things that annoy the crap out of me about him. Like, uh, I got an antique nightstand and put glass because he ruins everything. And, you know, like, so he would put his drink, you know. I was like, you weren't raised in a barn, I know that. And, um, and he would stuff things underneath it. Like, you know, papers and numbers and whatever. And I was like, that looks so junky. Like, that you just ruined that piece of furniture. But I'm going to tell you what, it was one of the best treasures when he passed away, because everything was sentimental. Whether it was a hotel key, whether it was a movie <coughs> ticket, whether it was, so what annoyed me turned out to be a treasure. You know, so those little, you gotta look for those little moments in tragedy, and you have to, you know, to me, faith is always asking God, you know, to, to be that light, because it's never not there. You know, even though we're human, and we think it's not. You know, we think it's not there, but it always is. So I feel like my life today, at the moment, <laughs> let me, you know, quantify that, at the moment is shining bright. You know, it really is. It's shining bright. Um, it's not a flickering light, you know, but there, there are moments through our lives where it will be a flickering light, but it will always be there. You know, so I don't, my faith journey has been, like, I just, not that I'm just this amazing believer and this amazing person of faith. I, I don't think that. I think my message is I don't want anyone ever to, to feel either alone or that they're not loved. Like, it's so, it's so hard to describe to somebody. Like, the most amazing love, like, I... I I can't imagine not having this relationship. I can't imagine surviving, standing on two feet without it. Um, it gets me through every single day, you know, like little and big. One of the best Bible studies we did, because I don't know about your faith journey, but sometimes, you know, you read about, you know, whether it's a saint or somebody doing all these marvelous, amazing things, and you think, well, oh, you know, I'm half of what that person has done. But I'm going to tell you the thing that I think Virginia was in the lesson with me because I'm a, one of her groupies and I follow her. <laughs> wise but, choice. Yes, it is a wise choice. Um, it was like, it was Girls of the... No, I don't know what it was. Bad Girls of the Bible. No, it wasn't Bad Girls. It was another book we read. But it was this mom that doubted, you know, like she wasn't doing enough, Right? because she was going through life and doing the small moments. But you never know. That's the beauty of being, you know, just be strong, as strong as you can in your faith, because you never know what a smile will bring. You never know what. And so the example I'm going to give you in the Bible is when Jesus um, fed the 500, right? You know, with a lunch from some kid, you know, and he turned the fish and the loaves and whatever. And you know how this book started out? It's my favorite part of the book. It said, you know what, who packed his lunch that day? <laughs> <laughs> and that has stuck with me. That has stuck with me. So it, it can be the everyday things, you know, that you do, that you never know is going to just, you know, be exactly what someone needs. You know, um, so I, 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 I ask God for a lot. And sometimes I feel guilty for that, you know, but I praise God a lot, you know. I praise Him when I come down the bypass and I get all the green lights. <laughs> I mean, little, like, I'm trying to Yeah, I mean, it's so funny how, um, 
you know, I went from like such a formality of prayer to like a casual, like this relationship has really been a tremendous change for me. You know, like people are like, well, do you pray every day? And I'm like, well, first of all, yeah, I talk all the time, whether it's in my car, whether it's a formal devotion, whether it's, you know, I mean, it's it's little prayers. It's a conversation, you know. It doesn't have to be so formal. Um, for me, you know, is what I, I backed away from that, you know, because that's what I had. Um, and I didn't see the meaning of it, but it's funny because when I go back home, you know, we go to Catholic Church, um, for all the holidays, and I'm like, wow, this is really good stuff. <laughs> like, you should stop. It's all memorized, you know. You should stop and talk about what you're saying, you know. It's, it's really powerful stuff. But if I can just put one thought in your pocket is that, um, you know, trusting God and, and with every ounce of my being, know that it, God, God is good and God is always good. And you can't always feel that, but he is always good and he always wants good for you, good for me. And, and, and unfortunately, not unfortunately, fortunately, because I'm old, you know, I can see that journey. I can see, like, oh my gosh, you, you really, you know, you did look out for me. Like, the doubt is becoming less and less. You know, and I can't say, you know, other things may happen to me in life, and I don't know. Maybe I start questioning again, and I hope I don't. I hope you don't. You know, but I, um, but just trust in God, you know, because I'm not a perfect believer. You know, um, I'm just Gabby, you know, and I, I just want everybody to feel the overwhelming love, the overwhelming grace that I've been able to experience in my life. And, and that is what I would want someone to get from me sharing is just, yeah, I can, I can go through tough times, but I know I'm loved. It's okay. It's okay. Um. I almost feel like that. Why did that song pop in? Did any of you guys watch American Idol where that woman <coughs> the answers sang a song, It's Okay? Yep. Yeah, it was really good. Um, but, you know, I, I'm, it's, it's, it's faith is not a destination like I started with. It's just moving forward in the face of uncertainty. And that's that was, that resonated with me a lot, you know, when I was looking at, you know, Faith, because un uncertainty is kind of scary for a lot of us, you know. A lot of us control freaks, <coughs> you know. We like we like to control, but that's not always God's plan, and that's okay, you know. But but I want to thank each and every one of you for allowing me and praying over me. Um, you know, I'm not a good speaker. I don't think I'm not a, you know, I don't do well in front of big crowds. But but each of you are so special to me. And so I feel like I'm drinking coffee in my sweatpants on the couch, you know, and that's what I want you to feel. Um, but does anyone have or want to ask me anything or? Yes. I have a comment. I just want to appreciate how when you talked about prayer, how it's not, you don't have to sit down for 30 minutes because then you'll feel guilty if you have. <laughs> yeah. You know, just, yeah. Just that conversation throughout the day. And I, I really appreciate you sharing that. Yeah, it, it gets me through my day because sometimes, you know, you know, like, okay, stop the road rage, God. You know, I'm feeling it. It's coming on. It's coming on. Help me. Or, you know, just, I don't know, stupid snarky things that I, I mean, feel guilty for even feeling, right? Um, and I'll ask, them, like, oh, gosh, I'm sorry, but... And a lot of times, it's really funny, I don't know if you guys have relatives or loved ones in heaven, but, um, and I, again, I'm sorry if this weirds you out, but I talk to Brian every day, and, you know, sometimes when things happen with the kids, or I do something that probably wasn't the best parenting move, um, I'm like, sorry. <laughs> like, I know you saw that. <laughs> um, and I used to have, like, even as a kid, though, my great-aunt Vicky died, and I remember she was such such a, an important person in my life, and 
when I would do something that wasn't a good decision, I always felt Great Aunt Vicki like, sorry. <laughs> um, and I tell my kids to do that. I'll tell you one quick funny story, and then I'll let you guys enjoy your lunch. But um, I encourage the girls to talk to Brian, too. You know, I was like, talk to him, you know. And shortly after he passed, and um, Camille was going into kindergarten, uh, we're driving to school. I'm taking her to school, and she's like, Mom, can you turn the radio off? I said, yeah. And she's like, I think Dad's trying to talk to me. Aww. And I said, okay, okay, fine. Aww. I said, all right. And I was expecting, like, this philosophical moment. Like, something is coming out that is going to be pretty powerful. And she's like, okay, you can turn the music on. I said, all right, well, well, I said, tell me, you know, what did you and Daddy talk about? And she's like, oh, he just said that I look pretty and have a good day at school. <laughs> Which is what he would have done every single day. You know what I mean? Like, and so, um, you know, and that's how we keep his memory alive, and that's how I get through my day, you know? You know, so, but it is, you know, I just... I try to pray about little things, and then I get an overwhelming sense of guilt because one, I hadn't prayed enough, or two, I've been asking for too much, and I don't praise. You know, I gotta. You know, what are the five pillars? Of prayer? You know, I gotta quit praying just for me, and then I gotta pray for other. You know, uh, and so I try my best. You know, but we're all human. You know, and the beauty of it, I think what convinced me when I was in my 20s a lot was delving in and, and really feeling like, even though Jesus was perfect, he experienced all of it. You know, he didn't have doubt from the apostles, you know. Oh, yeah, my friends doubted me. He, you know, his, his apostles doubted him. Or, you know, it, it's been a, a, a relatable, I'm a, I'm a life application person. Like, I can read the Bible, but until I start, like, wheels turning, like how can I apply it, or how does that apply to my life, um, does it really sink in. So, uh, but yeah. Anyone else want to ask me anything? Open book. Uh, I have a comment, too. <clears throat> you said, after Brian died, that you did not feel like you were a beacon of light. And I have to say, I was right there next to you. You were a beacon of light. Thank you. Never once did you stop taking care of your girls and even everybody else around you when we were helping you're like no I'm fine I got this and it's really hard for me to ask for help it is it is and you didn't want to and you know even when we say how are you and you said it is what it is you know we're good. and no, you, you were you were beacon light well, I appreciate you were strong, that because you, you know, may not have felt it and, and I'm glad to know if I was that for anybody you were because that's what I strive to be you know I miss the group. <laughs> I miss the okay. group. Any of you that don't go to our church or don't like, okay, Virginia we Parker is a like, <laughs> we have groupies. Should we are, I will admit, I am a groupie of Virginia Parker. Um, if you can do a small group with her, do it. She, she is so much, she has the amazing humor, amazing wisdom. And I, you know what, I'll never forget, it was, I don't know, I think I might have been like, had a rah, rah moment with Brian like before I came to Wednesday night or something and I probably came in and was just like, and I, like spit out something and Virginia's like you know you you know I don't know what you said but it made me think you know like be grateful you have them be grateful for those moments that you're like <laughs> because you're still with them you know um, but Gabby, you had a situation, you, I know it's not a club you want to be in, but you were able to help Michaela. <clears throat> oh, I have a soft spot for widows. Um, she's in a rough, she's in a tougher spot than I was, and so I try to give as much as I can when I have it. Um, it was uh, Officer Olden, I don't know, he, it was on the news, um, he passed away. He was the all-time scoring basketball star of Union University. Um, 
but Big O, uh, they, we called him Big O, and he was Blake's bailiff in city court yeah. and dropped dead of a heart attack. Mm -hmm. I mean, just like that. But leaving a wife and a five year old at the time, yeah, and, and an 11 year old. Same age as Camille. Um, and I called Brian. Gabby and I said, The children are at St. Mary's. I don't know if you feel like you're in a place. She said, I got it. I'm, I'll be with her. Yeah, I mean, I try to. And it's weird because I didn't really know her that well other than seeing her at basketball games, volleyball games. and um, It's a tender spot for somebody to go through that. And she, that's not how she thought her day was going to start or end. Gabby didn't think, you didn't think your day no. was going to end that way. But she had help. Yeah, and I think, um, and I was in, before COVID, this amazing widow group, mm -hmm. um, men and women. And... Um, the stories are just crazy. Um, you know, it makes you appreciate what you did get. And I will say this too, appreciate. Uh, another way to look at events is be grateful for what you got. I could focus on what I don't get, you know, but I, I focus on what I did get. Because through my therapy that I, had to, I went through is, um, you know, I realized I, I got the love of my life, and some people search their whole life and never find it. And I, I feel sad for them. But I got it. I got it. And um, and I'm so glad God gave them to me. You know, like, I, I'm so grateful. Um, and I will focus on that. And um, if, if you have, ever have anyone that has daughters and their father passes away, this is going to seem like, my friend did this for me, and it's the most valuable gift that I got. She's like, hey, um, I'm going to go run to the funeral home, and I'm going to ache his hands. And I was like, whatever, I don't care. You know, like, what are you talking about? You know, and I had no idea what she was doing. And she laminated them, and she goes, go put this in your lockbox, and he will walk them down the aisle when, when they come here. So do that. I mean, and, and since I know people, you know, I don't know if you knew Pat McGrath, but Donna McGrath, she has a daughter, uh, same. I was like, go before the funeral, do it. Because you know, those things are invaluable. Invaluable. You know, those things are everything. Everything to me. You know, um, and I'm so glad because that someone thought of to do that. And so now I try, you know, knowing what it meant to me. Um, you know, do that for others, but um, again, I hope n none of you have to go through that, you know, any tragedy. You don't, you never wish that on anybody, but, um, but thankfully, we've got a toolbox, you know, and, um, and hopefully your faith journey leads you to having a lot of tools, because that, it takes a toolbox of fabulous people like y'all, of a wonderful church, I will say, my family that came down from Ohio said, I have never in my life seen the support that you have and your family has here in Jackson. I was like, that's right. You know, I mean, and that's something to brag on y'all about because, you know, some, some people, my mom's like, you know, I've seen lots of people, you know, she's older, she's like, you know, that have passed and they just... I said, well, it's my church, it's my friends, it's my family, you know, like there's, I wouldn't, you know, change it for the world. I feel blessed. So I, I thank you guys for that, for giving me that. You're all very special people to me, very special. But that's my journey. We're blessed to know you. <laughs>